Just beyond the entrance to the Chihuahuan Desert Nature Park lies a partition tract of land housing a variety of grasses, shrubs, and flowering plants called forbs. While home to Plant Life Now, Ryan Pemberton with the Asombro Institute for Science Education says the site looked very different in June 2000. That's when 7,000 gallons of diesel fuel spilled on the park's northern boundary. So this all started because uh, there is a diesel pipeline uh, running through our park, and when the road was being bladed, it got accidentally nicked. Uh, and to clean up that area, the owners of the pipeline cleared off this area not knowing it was our park uh, to create a parking lot for the vehicles to help clean up that spill. Pemberton says the bear lot served as the perfect case study to answer two key questions. Is it possible to restore native plants in areas degraded by human activity? And if so, what's the cheapest and easiest way to do it? The project began in 2001, but since 2006, the Asombro Institute has worked exclusively with 7th grade science magnet students from Sierra Middle School, who collect data at the site twice a year. There are 32 plots for students to survey. Each has been treated with one of four mixtures of native grasses, cow manure, and chicken wire to keep out rabbits and other herbivores. That's uh, 56. 56. 13-year-old Lucas Vallejos and his classmates use meter sticks to measure any changes in shrub growth within their plots. We measured the different vegetation inside each plot, and so, like, there's different shrubs, and then we have to measure the height, the length, and the width of each shrub, and then we have to count the percentage of the land mass that the forbs or the grasses or the shrubs that they cover in the different plots. Another outdoors enthusiast, 13-year-old Caitlin New, jots down the percentage of living grasses and forbs covering her plot. New says there's much less growth in this unfenced plot than the fenced parcel she first surveyed in September. So my plot today was an open plot, so it was free to animals and the environment. And so our plot didn't have very much growth in it other than some forbs, um, which are some little like grass-like, but thin leaves and more spread open. Um, and since it was open, there wasn't very much growth, so there wasn't a lot of creosote or grass. Pemberton says that's because the response of native grasses depends heavily on rainfall for the year. So years that we don't get a lot of rainfall, we tend to not have a lot of grass growth in these plots. And so this year, what they saw in September was not a lot of grass. And then when they've come back now in February, it did. we did get a good bit of winter rain. So they're seeing a lot more forbs instead of these grasses. Because the ecological expedition is often a middle schooler's first time using the scientific method outside, Pemberton says Asombro staff educate students during classroom visits to prepare them for field work. So they're being a part of the scientific process. So this is a long-term study. It's been going on since 2001 when we built the plots. So they are looking at data that has been collected since before they were born at this point. And they are a part of this process and they are learning that even long-term studies are important as well as short-term experiments that they might do in school. Pemberton says students can also use the data they gather in an annual science project competition called the Desert Data Jam. The goal is to come up with creative ways to make sense of scientific data to non-scientific audiences. Let's say it all together so we don't forget. Length times width times height. Even beyond collecting data, 7th grade science teacher Natalie Reno says the field trips give her students hands-on experience in fields they might pursue someday. It's great to give them real life data and real life experience um, doing a project that's important, um, getting them out of the classroom and seeing the difference even in their attitudes with um, what they can do and not just what they know out of a book. Um, I try to give them all sorts of opportunities to see how they could end up doing something like this in their, in their life. For New, learning new things about the environment is always fun, especially when she can take part in community science with her classmates. When I think of community science, I think of working together as a school and a team. And when we do it with partners in a group, it's a lot more fun to work and it's a lot easier to work together. Like the native vegetation, the significance of teamwork and desire for learning about local flora is something educators aim to keep on cultivating. For KRWG Public Media, I'm Michael Hernandez.